Hello everyone. This is a general video for all the students who are currently studying in your BTEC. And in this video, I'm going to discuss about what are your plans after your BTEC. So, I mean, what, what happens in, in most of the time, the BTEC students, they are mostly confused about what to do after BTEC because uh, some of them are having different plans. When you are studying in your BTEC, some of your friends might go for higher studies, some of your friends might go for company, some of your friends might go for uh, government jobs. So, what to do after BTEC, it's very difficult to decide because uh, right now you don't have uh, any information about what to do after BTEC, what are the career choices you have. So, we'll be discussing about all those career choices that you have after BTEC. So, uh, the mainly things that we are going to discuss about is the government jobs and the public sector jobs that is PSUs and Indian Engineering Services and a part of this we are also going to discuss about the gate examination. So, what are your plans? So the plan A that most of you are following is about getting a private company, a job in a private company. Now, the problem with this kind of job is you don't know what kind of job you are going to get into. For example, let us say you are a computer science student. You might be electronics and communication student, you might be electrical student. But the major problem with electronics and communication students is there are very few companies which are core companies in electronics and communication. So. Uh, maximum number of vacancies the maximum number of jobs that students will be getting they will be from computer science discipline and what happens is in last few years what i have seen personally is that 99 percent of electronics and communication students who are uh, who have done btech who are currently working in the private companies they are mostly working in the it sector or you can say software companies so what might be your plan b so plan b might be going for higher studies for example, you have done your BTEC. Now you might be planning for MBA. You might be planning for MTech. You might be planning for MS from abroad. So you have plans for higher studies. And the third plan might be going for government job or the PSUs. Now, third plan itself is becoming very hot these days because there are BTEC students who are preparing for SSC CGL and BTEC students who are preparing for uh, even government technical jobs. So the technical jobs might be in the PSUs, the technical jobs might be in your uh, government department and so on. So you should know what is the difference between a PSU and you should know what is the difference between uh, the typical government job and a PSU. So let us discuss about your plan A. So plan A, what are the requirements for the plan A? So first of all, uh, for getting a job in a private companies, you should have good aptitude skills. You might be seeing that uh, if you are from a middle tier company, maybe or uh, if you are from a middle tier college, so it might be a uh, college where you are getting, uh, which, which are from the state universities or which are from the central university. So if, if you are in a tier two college, in that case, the most of the companies that you are, might be getting in your college are tier three companies. For example, Wipro, Infosys, all these companies are actually tier 3 companies which are service based companies. For these service based companies, the first round of interview is about your technical, uh, is about your aptitude. So first of all, you have to clear your aptitude uh, for getting selected for the interview process or for the technical round. So first of all, you have to prepare for general aptitude. Then you should have some good academics to prove that you are skilled enough to get a job. So most of the time they prefer students who should have at least 70% throughout their entire education history. So that is your uh, 12th class, your BTEC. So you should have good academics. A part of this you should have good fundamental grasp or you can say good fundamental concepts. So this good fundamental concepts actually varies from companies to companies. But there might be some companies which are bulk rec recruiters. They do not take their technical interviews. But if you go for the product based jobs or the product based companies, they will ask for good fundamentals or core in-depth fundamentals in your subject and then you need good communication skills to get a job so because obviously there are various rounds you have uh, a group discussion round you have a personal interview round so to clear all those rounds you should have very good communication skills and again you might be going for off-campus placement or you might be going for on campus placement so on campus placement is, means company will come to your college and you are highly uh, likely to get placed in those companies because they'll prefer students for th from that particular college itself and then you might be getting an off campus placement off campus means you might be going to other colleges or you might be going directly to the companies for the interviews and then your plan b might be for the highest studies so you might want to do let us say mba you might want to do ms you might want to do mtech 
so for plan b also you should have good academics for higher studies you should have good technical experience and then you should have good fundamental concepts so let us say you want to plan for masters that is mtech now for mtech you should your core fundamentals for every subject should be good and then you should have a positive attitude to do research so that is uh, your plan b and apart of this you want to um, if you want to go for masters in techn technology or masters in engineering or you want to do masters in science or so that is called ms then you want to prepare for gate that is graduate aptitude test in engineering and then you have plan c so plan c is about government jobs again the government jobs can be technical and non technical both of them so let us say you want to prepare for technical government jobs in that case you should have a good positive attitude to prepare well and then you should have good technical fundamentals or you can say good conceptual skills to prepare for government jobs again you might you can get a government job in technical skills in technical if through gate examination or you can get a government job uh, through indian engineering services now what exactly is this gate examination because gate examination is very important for your preparation so if you are uh, you know uh, in preparing for your government jobs you are preparing for your private company jobs or you are preparing for higher studies in all these cases you have seen that we need good core concepts so you can clear good core concepts with the help of this gate examination so what exactly is the gate examination so gate examination is about testing your technical skills it tests how good engineer you are so full form is graduate aptitude test in engineering or you can say graduate aptitude test for engineers so this gate examination is conducted by your seven iits which is iit bombay iit delhi iit guwahati iit kanpur iit khadakpur iit madras and iit rurki and a part of this one iic bangalore that is the top most institution for masters over in india so your performance is measured in the form of a gate score and according to that gate score you are going to get admissions in uh, top iits or you can get admi uh, admissions in or you can say admitted in the top psus which might be ongc iucl and all these companies okay now it is used for admissions for post post graduates for example you might want to do mtech or me or ms or you directly want to go for phd's again gate is used for all these things and uh, it is also used for psu examination so the most mode of examination is completely online it happens on weekends there is on uh, for example gate 2018 will be happening on 3rd february to 11th february i mean it already happened on 3rd february to 11th february so announcement of the result for gate 2018 held on 17th of march and the valid gate score i mean the gate score is valid for 3 years there is you can show your gate score for the next 3 years to all the recruiters in your companies as well as for psus or for higher studies so when you do your gate i mean when you uh, choose to do masters through gate so in that case government pays you 12400 rupees per month as a stipend so this stipend is paid by mhrd that is ministry of human resource development so there is for you so that you can continue your studies as well as you can perform do some research in your field and area in the gate there are total of uh, 65 questions in the question paper where 30 questions are from one mark and 30, 35 questions are for for two marks and a part of this you have uh, uh, i mean in those 65 questions you have 10 questions from general aptitude in those 10 questions five are from one mark and five are from two marks and there's a negative marking which is 1 by 3 So what is the minimum cutoff for gate examination? So you can see for every branch the cutoff is already decided. I mean most of the time the cut cutoff remains the same. It only changes when number of candidates increases or could the competition also decreases. So for example in computer science discipline itself on average every year the cutoff is around 25 marks only out of 100 and uh, only one time in 2012 the cutoff raised to 32.67 marks otherwise generally the cutoff for computer science discipline is only 25 marks. And then you have other disciplines like electronics and communication the cutoff is 25 electrical engineering the cutoff is 25.10 mechanical engineering the cutoff is 29.60 civil engineering the cutoff is 25 and for instrumentation engineering the cutoff is again 31.60 that means you have to score these many marks to clear the gate examination now number of students who appeared on the gate examination that is quite fascinating so you can see in 2016 8 lakh 18000 students appeared for the gate examination in 2017 9 lakh 22000 students appeared for the gate examination approximately and in 
also approximately one uh, ten lakh students appeared for the gate examination. So this graph is denoting the number of students which are increasing every year, every year for gate examination because the number of PSUs and the number of jobs that you will get after gate will also it increase. I mean, every year the number of more and more PSUs are recruiting through gate examination. Now, the result statistics for city wise. So this is city wise result statistics. You can see New Delhi. The number of, number of students from New Delhi, they are the maximum number of students who are qualifying the gate examination. The second one is Hyderabad and third one is Kolkata and fourth one is Bangalore. I mean, from these major cities, uh, your, most of the students are qualifying the gate examination. So if you are from New Delhi, Hyderabad, Kolkata, Bangalore, so because the kind of coaching institutions that are present in these locations, they are good quality coaching institutions. That is why you can get good uh, education for gate examination. So. Now, why GATE is so important? Obviously, because there are many PSUs. For example, in computer science itself, 25 PSUs which are recruiting through GATE examination. They are giving very good salary package, which is around 8 to 9 lakhs per annum. And then you have options to do masters or PhDs from top IITs. And then uh, you can also get admissions in some of the private institutions through GATE examination as well as you'll get some funding. Now, uh, this is the information regarding the PSUs for every branch. For example, you can see PSU is BSNL Bharat Sanchar Nikam Limited. It recruited from electronics and communication, electrical, computer science and radio. And uh, this is the minimum cut of marks that they require. A part of this, you can see BHEL that is Bharat uh, Heavy Electricals Limited. Uh, it recruited from electrical, electronics and communication, mechanical and civil engineering. And the minimum cut of marks was 60 for general category. Again, for ONGC, the minimum cutoff marks was around 65 for general category. And then we have PARC, that is Baba Atomic Research Center, SAIL, and then you have BPCL and IOCL, Indian Oil Corporation Limited, MTL Mahanagar Te Telecom Nigar Limited, and so on. There are so many PSUs that are recruiting through GATE. So you can see all the information in front of your screen. You can take a printout of this and you can paste it on your wall. That is, how many PSUs or how many companies you can see they are recruiting through GATE examination or you can say they are recruiting through your gate score so obviously you can see how important is your gate exam so uh, will help you in your preparation of your gate examination uh, will help you in both in your face to face interviews we help you in both psu cutoff analysis your mtech preferences admissions cutoff and so on so there are many ways we can help you okay now uh, even uh, the mhrd also they uh, introduced some new areas I mean for research research areas where you can do research after your masters or in during your masters throughout your year so that's also helps uh, I mean your gate exemption helps also helps in these areas so thank you so much for watching this video I hope this video was helpful for you and this was a very quick video a quick introduction to the gate examination so I hope it was very helpful for you if you like this video please like and share with your friends and thank you so much for watching